Okay, this meeting is called into order. This is a council meeting, I presume. So, Judy, if you call the roll. Indeed. Stokes? I am here. McQueen? Here. Couch? Here. Brown? Yes. DeVorley? Yes. Uh, the President, General Manager Donnie Burns, Finance Director Amy Kemper, and Police Chief Paige Burge. Alrighty. And? The mold. And no, the mold. <laughs> <laughs> it's only because I'm looking at you. <laughs> you didn't right even in. That's, why, that's why. That's why it's gone so far. So I didn't write it. Um, so we're scheduled from 12 to 2. We need to have, I understand, a pretty hard stop at 2. So let's try to be as efficient as possible. So I'm inclined to hand the floor to Amy, unless uh, someone else wants to take the lead. Uh, you? Nope. Got. I'm good. Okay. Uh, we all got a packet. Uh, thank you, Judy. And an agenda with some outcomes. If we can, um, we can discuss the agenda if somebody has some variance that they need to do. Uh, I don't know that it will take 45 minutes, and I'll, I shouldn't have said that because I just jinxed us all <laughs> to talk about some of these changes. But um, what I've included in your first from 12.05 to 1 o'clock, we're talking about the changes that we made in um, from budget meeting one to budget meeting two um, I've included in your packet the uh, spreadsheet that's got the green stuff on it that says that was the list of things that we wanted to add and change and, and I marked them as they were added I put some other notes in there just for me just so you know um, and so those have all been pushed through the budget and Memo. It's here somewhere. Is it not? Oh, here's my memo. Um, so I'm just going to go over the budget like we did last time. Where are we at right now? What's the bottom line? What changes did we make? What do we need to still consider? And then um, stop me if you have questions. So as of budget memo number two, the current budget is sitting at a deficit of $2.1 million compared to last year's budgeted loss of 2.9. Some of this is repetitive, but they have changed a little bit. Projected revenues are $15.5 million for 2023, or for 2024, and 2023's budget was 12.8. We talked about the $1.2 million grant that's bumping those revenues up for 2024, along with water and sewer and electric consumer fees increases and an increase in income tax. So those are propping revenues up for 2024. That really hasn't changed since budget meeting one. Uh, revenues haven't changed, but a titch. Uh, projected expenses have changed since our changes last time. We're at now at 17.7 million for 2024 compared to 16.9 million uh, in 2023. Wages are three million flat, pretty much, with FTEs of 56.38, and compared to wages of 2.8 million and FTEs of 53.38. So we have three additional FTEs in 2024 budgeted. I did do the cost of living increase at 3.5 percent. It was 4 percent in 2023. Um, Council sponsorships are in there at $50,000. We can talk about special events um, a little later in the agenda. And then I adjusted PAC and Environmental Commission for their requests for a total of 16,000 combined. <coughs> Affordable housing has got loss in place in it, and that's 162,000 of that uh, fund for 2024 and I had put 52,000 for other affordable housing ventures and uh, Brian had sent me a note and said he thought that that was supposed to be 100,000. Is that an additional 52,000? Because I had 48 first round and we wanted to add 52. I just increased it to 52. So we'll have to add that $48,000 change. So that'll drop our um, or, or increase our loss by 48,000, so I'll push that one through. I just wanted to, Brian mentioned it to me and I wanted to clarify the, the, that I will. Change, the, what was it originally? Was it, originally it was 48,000. 48, so the change is 52. So we're adding 52. Right. But well, in the current, right. so it's 52 now in, in what we've got. So Budget that's number why, two, it's 52, because I upped it to 52 instead. So that's of why the 48 will be. 
Okay. So we're adding 48 more. Okay. So we'll keep a running tab today of um, where the bottom line looks like. Um, so that's one change we'll make. Uh, I didn't make any changes to the carryover cash balance. Um, there are two things to consider. The timing of the um, water capital grant for 2024, it's in there currently. Uh, it may start in 2023. I'll hold in my breath, but it may. And then the sale of energy recs is not in either budget right now because it's revenue. And we don't want to overestimate revenue if we're either not going to sell or delay selling. So I, those two items are not under consideration right now. They can be put into budget at any time. So. Mm -hmm. That does seem to be an important issue, selling the recs. Do we have a plan for how that, when that's going to be discussed? We're in, we're waiting on AMP. It's in AMP's hands trying to find out all the greenies that we can buy. Are they going to, I presume once they have the information, they'll come in and present? Correct. It's going to be a meat launch. Tom, <laughs> that we do. Once they have the greenies and know what we're going to do, then they'll send it to me and I will bring it to council. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, we had one other change that came about uh, in the last week or so. When we met with uh, YS Community Foundation, they asked for $60,000, not $50,000 from the village for a renovation of 201 South Walnut. And it's mostly because we increased their rent from 1,000 to 1,500 a month. So it's apples and oranges. I mean, if, they're, if we had a long-term lease of 1,500, we're certainly gonna get our $10,000 back over right. time. But that's not in the budget right now. So, so that, that means they don't want to invest twenty five thousand anymore. They're investing fifteen plus. In the well, we haven't agreed to it yet, right. so right. Right, 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 that's right. what they're proposing. Yes, and that was a proposal that just came back this week. Correct. An updated proposal. They are still doing in kind of twenty five thousand. Twenty five thousand and fifteen thousand. Of, of what's their own what's money. in kind mean? Um, it's um, they're it donating the, it. The consulting time. Consulting, engineering, and things like that. Hmm. I think there's one thing I didn't see. It maybe it's somewhere else for the mediation program. They're in, in there. In the green. Um, uh, they were already in there. Um, Diane's else. was already in oh. there. Now. The stipend has not been increased. I don't know what the process is to do that. I didn't feel like it was my purview to say, hey, sure, we'll pay you. Um, she gets $500 a month right now, and she was proposing a higher stipend. Well, the steering committee. Okay. Should I speak to that now? Or? That's fine. I mean, it, it needs to be addressed because it is not in there right now. So I, it's my sense that the stipend that the um, coordinator for the mediation program has gotten has been the same for uh, about 30 years and uh, some, sometimes the coordinator hasn't really done all that much and maybe that's fair but the combination of Diane taking over who's really active and the community foundation making a priority for having training and conflict resolution uh, and I don't know maybe there's more community interest because there's more publicity. She's working a lot. And um, we, the steering committee, well, I, I propose that we have the uh, coordinator be tied with sort of what we get, this, which would be more than what she, which we've asked for, which is 7,500 as opposed to 6,000. Um, I think she does a fantastic job. And, Definitely worth 75, bumping up her up uh, $1,500 a year. So I'm, or we've requested that in our submission. You, you mentioned what council gets, I, and I try not to think about it. So I don't, I mean, I, I feel like it's, it is what it is, but I don't know that it's that far away from 7500 It's uh, next 600. year. 600. It, next year it's 8069 I think. Okay. Okay. 
And your sense is, I mean, so I know uh, Diana is, is working really hard. Do you feel that um, mediation program is also being more utilized yes. than in the past? Yes, it is. Okay. So, so not feel that it is. Yes. Do we have stats to that? Yeah, or? I think that needs to come as a normal proposal that anyone would make with from the committee, not from the person asking for the increase. Uh, it, it, it came from her committee, I think, but it, she said it. it did not from the steering committee. Oh. And, and there is, um, there's just, a, to answer your question, or whoever asked question about how much they're being utilized, there is a plan afoot um, coming from Inclusive Resilient Yellow Springs to do something more with those mediation. But it was in the very early stages when I last met with them last week. Okay. There, there is some uh, activity being directed towards Good. those mediation. Well, so, so as far as stats go, I guess my question would be like, yes, there are groups that are going to be using me mediation or utilizing kind of the, the seed of what mediation is, but have there, has there been an increase in individuals that are using Yes, there have. Yeah, and uh, we can do, I, Diane, it, it would be good for Diane to be making a report to council and talk about that. But yes, there are more mediations, there are more calls. So a lot, one thing that the coordinator does is when people call, she's able to talk to them. Sometimes just talking to the coordinator helps people feel like, oh, okay, now I can do it. So there are more calls, there are more mediations, there are more trainings, um, just more interest in the program. And she's, it's a lot of, and more money coming in, like grants from the community fund. Mm -hmm. Well, it's an important program. I think, I mean, to me, it seems why not budget for it? And then maybe there's a report and a formal ask that, you know, confirms that. So, well, then what is the form? What's the difference between submitting our budget and making a formal ask? Well, I feel like if it's done in the budget process, then it has been requested. So then, are we not? Do we not need the um, the commissions, for example, to do anything this they year? They already have. It's part of the budget. They all submitted. Their no, I know. But in the past, it's come by resolution, and that was well, dictated to us by. Up and down and this no, I know. Well, I'm just clarifying, right? Like, I so think. It, we don't I need think to, to me, if we can get it done in the budget process and save that, I mean. Yes, updates and how's things going and we need this or something's different is great, but if she has $10,000 to spend, she has $10,000 to spend and then you just hold them accountable, the commission accountable to their budget and they work with us to open POs and all that fun stuff, I feel like council meetings can shrink a little bit. Do we Unless need to pass want, that by okay. Amy B as well? Because, I mean, I just remember... I guess it was Brianne, right, that said that we needed to bring these things forward by resolution um, beyond the budget process. But if no one thinks we need to do that, I'm cool. I mean, the mediation is just a department in the budget, yeah. as is council. So, okay. I mean, that's how I feel. It, right. I, that never made any sense to me when Matt insisted upon it, and never made any sense to me when Brianne insisted Oh, yeah. I mean, we all just say in her name that <laughs> they get to keep shilling. <laughs> if it, if Everybody before ABK. request comes in the middle, like next February, and it's something that was never budgeted for, yes, it needs a resolution. But these requests right. are being made now, and they're incorporated in the budget. So a resolution to me is like complete overkill. And, and I think this is, uh, to Amy's point, this is an indication of our more progressive process yielding fruit. I mean, we're addressing these issues now, so they don't have to come. We know it's going to come up. <coughs> the whole thing about asking, um, I, I'm tempted to use the phrase usual suspects, you know, but the folks who tend to come uh, with us, we've come to us on a regular basis. We've done that outreach. They've shared or supposed to be sharing <laughs> their requests, and this is an example of that. So it's one and done almost. And then we manage the exceptions. You know, if, if, if something in particular happens or there's some outside of the village expense that, that, that they incur or, or something of that nature. And the actual expense and the use of those funds goes through the village process, you know, the 3000 5000 30000 You know, it's coming back to you. You're not going to spend $50,000 on um, 
basic income pilot without it coming back to you to say we need a contract, we need an RFP, that kind of stuff. So the little stuff, we absolutely, we open POs, we pay their invoices, we talk to them about, you know, timing and all that fun stuff, and that shouldn't, you shouldn't have to worry about that. Good. I think that sounds great. Um, so I support that being added to the, that bump being added to the budget. So, so done. For, I don't know how everyone else feels. It sounds like I support it, doesn't it? I think so. <laughs> um, did anybody else have items that came up that we hadn't talked about in budget meeting number one that needed to be added or reviewed? I don't know about this being added, but, um, and Johnny, and of course Marianne was there at our last active transportation committee meeting, and just a couple things that have come up um, that I wanted to flag is, uh, you know, one, considering, you know, our continued support for uh, safety uh, around things like, you know, making sure our sidewalks are striped properly and, and some of the other things, but, um, there is the potential for um, the next, this would be the third Safe Routes to School application, which would involve a uh, joint uh, um, matching coverage between the schools and the village. Um, so I don't think we need a budget for it. And in fact, you know, Johnny highlighted at the meeting, which I thought was appropriate, that um, that's where the supplemental piece comes in. So anyway, but I just wanted to mention it because it came up um, last week. Or earlier this week. Um, apropos to that discussion, uh, John, you had mentioned that there was thirty thousand in the budget for sidewalk, and my memory was that it used to be fifty thousand. So, was there some reason for dropping it? We we dropped it a couple years ago. Um, do finances. We need to take it out of the streets to be able to give it to other places. So I'd love to do it for <coughs> Can I have a, ask a follow up question about safe for us to school or if that's not um, finished? Well, I just wanted to flag that because given how uh, important sidewalks seem to be. You know, the problem is the streets funds have to support it. Right. So. So we mean increasing the funding for the streets. The streets comes out of the general fund, right? Yeah. It's a transfer. Yep. I mean, I support <coughs> going back to budgeting fifty thousand, and I know Johnny, you emphasized that. Um, You've been doing the best that you can with striping and other things, but I mean it's never enough. You're correct. And, and I understand like we're already uh, having more expenses than income, and at some point we we'll maybe have to prioritize what doesn't get done, doesn't get spent. But I'm just holding that up as, as possible. Keep that at 50 and maybe manage it. Okay. Finances don't work as we move along. We'll get together. Okay. For the safe process goal, sorry. No, no, you go. If sometimes they have funding for sidewalk repairs, right? Is that is that separate from that? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so we can apply every five years for a program grant and a construction grant, infrastructure grant. Um, so is that time coming up? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so okay. um, they're finalizing the, um, they're updating the uh, travel plan um, by the end of the year. And so that's when we can strategize about what makes sense. So, you know, like the, the limestone sidewalk was the last one. Prior to that was the uh, Winter Street in Fairfield. Um, so we want to make sure, since we can only do it every five years, mm -hmm. that we're strategic about what we actually, you know, go after. Mm -hmm. So. But and it's coming up, and it's on Johnny's radar, right? Johnny's what you're saying? It's yeah. on the school's radar and ours. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, and then we would want you to be involved in that too, Matt. Okay. 
so I was wondering too. <laughs> so I was like, probably going to include me. Um, yeah. So the first step is they've got to update that um, school travel plan, though. So that's what they're doing now. Okay. Yeah. Um. So Kevin, were you going to say something about the fifty thousand for sidewalks? No, no, no. no. Okay. No. I think I was going to change the subject, but I forgot where I was going. Well, I mean, maybe this is a good time. Amy, do you want to just emphasize sort of the what we want to keep in the general fund related to that 25% number recommended by the Right. Um, Brian had asked what fund balances are required. There, there's guidance. There's no requirement on what you keep in every fund. Um, Hostway had said what they generally had done is kept one quarter of actual expenses from that fund. So if it's a $5 million expense, you're going to keep 1250 in there, 1.2 million. Um, I feel that's a little close to the bone, so I always aim above that. Um, we do track in, in the budget packet pages, you'll see, um, we do track each fund and where they land. Um, so, you know, like our cash reserve request amount for 2024 for the street maintenance fund is 200,000 and we're projecting we'll have about 350,000. I feel comfortable with that. Um, <clears throat> it gives us a little cushion if there's a levy issue, if there's a, you know, COVID happened, we didn't get our income tax money, we had extra so we were cool. Is that going to happen again? I hope not, but who knows. Um, I came from a park district where we were 100% levy funded. So we lived and died by the levy, so we never cut it that close because we, you, there's no guarantee that that levy's gonna pass or you might have to try three or four times to get it. So um, I'm a little more conservative. Uh, I feel like the 11 million we have is great right now. Um, it depends on big projects we wanna do in two years, three years, five years, because that stormwater fund for $50,000 isn't gonna do us anything for the next four years if, unless we have $250,000 to do what needs to happen. So some of those have to build up. We can, we can talk to the auditor about that, like, hey, we're, you know, we're gonna do this big project and it's gonna be $800,000 and we got a grant for the other four, but that 800,000 is coming from this and that's why that fund, that cash reserve is building up right now. So, I mean, it's all very doable and he's, they're reasonable people. They want us to succeed, they just don't want people to get too comfortable. Um, reiterate, we're just working on stuff for Carmen yesterday. I mean, we have essentially broken even for the last two years. I, last year we had a $900,000 surplus. This year we're going to be a break even. That's, that's perfect stuff because that gives you some leeway to do some things. If we had the money in the right funds, it would make, make me a little happier. But, um, the water fund is short, is really short. So um, the general fund has been supplementing that, and it, the water capital fund, not the enterprise fund. Um, and but I think those consumer rate increases are going to start kicking in for us, and that's going to help in the long run to get those enterprise funds to be self-sustainable, so that we won't have to rely on the general fund as much. But until then, I think the general fund has to be a little more robust, and and be able to say, oh, we can pay for that water tower painting, which we did. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I'm conservative. I'm not going to lead you down the path where, you know, but we're also going to walk the line where the county auditor is going to be happy. He's never said anything in particular to us and said, oh, geez, Yellow Springs, you got too much money. He, he, <laughs> that's not ever going to happen, right? But he did say in a general memo, people, if you don't need your levies, don't ask for them. The people of this county are already taxed enough. So I just bring it to you as he brought it to me. So. So if I read the, the projections correctly, worst case scenario, the general fund would come down to 1.7 something. And if we, if I saw that number correctly, and then the state recommendation of 25%, um, Amy, you mentioned that would be like 1.3 million. Yeah. And then we're currently at 2.4. Yeah. So I guess saying all that, another 20,000, to support sidewalks um, should be doable. 
um, without right. putting any. Do you yeah. mind just saying the first thing you said again? Like you said, worst case scenario. Right, meaning up? like if um, uh, in this budget, you know, we hit the revenues and expenditures as they're projected, then um, that number came out to 1.7 something million um, that would be left in the general fund. Um, but I guess, you know, I mentioned that with the caveat that revenues are gonna be higher, expenditures, you know, have tended to be lower, and so um, will probably come out uh, differently. Okay, so, I was just trying to figure out how you got to that 700, or 1.7. Um, it was it was in one of the it's in the documents that we got. Was that the bottom of page five? Is that, what was that it? At? Yeah. One point seven five six. Mm -hmm. Yep. Got it. Thank you. But anyway, I mean, you know, we <coughs> so, we know that's kind of how it usually comes out. Yeah. So we've talked about some of this some at the finance committee, but just to like. I think that's a good enough, good chance to like talk about sort of the big picture situation, or the, not situation, but the, just the, the question on the table, is just so we're all sort of aware. It's like we're basically we're fine right now, and we could be fine for frankly, depending on the rate, like several years, likely even deficit spending at these rates. The the question becomes, what do you want to spend that on? And so this mm -hmm. long so. At finance committee, and Amy particularly, correct me if I mischaracterize this, but Amy spent a lot of this year kind of getting things caught up on the day-to-day, -day, the month-to-month, -month, and then in the coming year, we'll want to spend more time looking toward future planning so that more of that, these things are obviously on the radar, but when we all talk about 20000 more for this and 50000 more for that and 100000 more for that, the most concerning dynamic is, is you can't do that forever. And particularly, to what degree do those, what seem like small chunks on their own, chip into particularly the big infrastructure needs? Exactly. And, and so there's a give and take of how many things to do now versus how many things to be holding for the long term, and we're in that balancing act and in that middle. Is that a fair characterization? So I don't think we have any acute problems, essentially, with this is coming from me, I think you know last year it didn't feel that way. I don't think it was communicated that way, etc. It feels like it's a fine position to be in and it's, it's also an indication of how we have some work to do in terms of figuring out what our priorities are, um, you know, which things do we want to spend on. But we do have on some level of the luxury of deciding what to spend on, not having it be like uh, we don't have any money to spend. Mm -hmm. I think strategic planning would be really helpful, I mean, to the staff in particular, because I think Johnny has a, a very intensive spreadsheet of things he knows that need to happen, but if, if we're running a $2 million deficit every year, that, um, then his $3 million project may never happen, right? Mm -hmm. So we need to figure out, through strategic planning, <clears throat> what's the infrastructure thing that happen, needs to happen and when is it going to happen and then we can build that into the budget and that's the super exciting part of strategic planning because then we all know we all said yeah that's what we're doing mm -hmm. and there's going to be variations to that to an nth degree but not from the big picture so we're not chasing the $20,000 sidewalks we're really putting our eye on the big pieces <clears throat> and the big sewer holes that are in the middle of the streets and stuff like that so well, I guess that's why I feel like we should be thinking about investments that are going to, you know, like strategic planning that are going to benefit us and, and address those things in the future. It's why I think everyone, there seems to be consensus around paid parking, you know, so I think that those kinds of investments make sense. Um, two things I, I want to mention that I think are relevant in this general discussion. One is, Johnny, you had mentioned that uh, 201 Walnut, that maybe we could separate that, you know, what is now looking like a $60,000 investment, like maybe that doesn't all have to happen next year? That is for the, to get them in the door. Okay. So okay. it does need to happen. So, that we, so we have to do so that. So I just, I just looked back, 60, Amy asked me if, what I thought. So I've looked at their plan. That's $60,000 to get them in, <clears throat> get them in there, get them started. And then the other stuff is comes later, like the back porch or whatever. Sixty thousand dollars to take that on, we couldn't touch it for that. 
we spent $48,210 to remodel one ADA bathroom in a library. And that was with, on top of the 10,000 that they did for the engineering that Green County paid for. So we, we spent $60,000 on one restaurant. So it's a nice restaurant. Deal. <laughs> it ain't that nice. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just saying. So the point is, I think, is that the community foundation is really kind of ponying up a little bit. Because I went to Johnny and I said $60,000. He said, we can get a long-term lease and we can get their buy-in to keep that building right. up. That's the that's the win right. for us. Because mm -hmm. there's not too many tenants that can we can have in that building. No. And then the other thing I wanted to mention is, um, and I emailed Johnny and Amy about this, is there are two opportunities this year for state dollars. Um, so there's the regular uh, state capital uh, budget, which we've secured minimal amounts of money in the past, and uh, and we need to really think about what we want to prioritize for our ask there. But there's also a special seven hundred million dollar community uh, strategic investment fund. Um, and so we should be going after, uh, you know, money for both of those. Um, and, you know, again, we're usually successful on some level um, every year or every other year. Uh, but let's factor that in as well. And that may um, cover some of the key projects that we have. Is that state money? Yeah, both of those are state. Which departments? Um, well, we have to go uh, after our uh, state senator and state rep to get on their list. They're almost like earmarks. Oh. So, um, so an example was we uh, allowed um, WISO to like uh, take our position for an ask um, with you know their new building, um, but. You know, these are projects that, I mean, especially with that community reinvestment uh, or investment grant uh, opportunity, I mean, we, we could ask for a couple million uh, for a project. So, yeah, that's, that's 700 million, and it's all because of the rainy day fund being maxed out. So, um, so yeah, so anyway, so that could make things look even better once we prioritize what we want to ask for. So what are the next steps with that then? Well, the timing's pretty tight. Nine, November third. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So how you know what it, what are we asking for? I guess that's the question. <laughs> Wait, that was a deadline or something. <coughs> um, I think November third's a Whoa. different thing. Um, <laughs> the November. state asks, so they'll go right up to the. Yeah. So I mean, for the, the day, for the seven hundred million pot. We just need to have it on our uh, legislators' radars by the end of the year. Um, but the sooner, the better. Um, capital budget by the beginning of the year. November third. What was just, the, uh, oh, that's the PDAC. So the um, the PDAC thing is to just if we score well, that makes us look even better. So yeah. So so Johnny's essentially right. By November third, we should have some priorities. Um, I think uh, that's something that. I mean, we know the projects, so maybe the next step is um, Johnny, Amy, maybe myself and one other council member um, should huddle. And uh, and I guess I put myself in there just because I'm familiar with those uh, funds, so. Yeah, and I'd like to be involved. I think Gavin probably has a better hand for this stuff than I do, but, but I want to get up to speed on it, so, so. All right, so the two of us, so tell me who's driving that. And if I haven't told everybody, I'm out of the state all of next week. So, we know how to, so we have, there, there has to be a huddle by November 3rd, but you're out of, you're out of the state. I, I can virtual, or maybe it should be someone else. I'll, I can huddle. Okay. Um, because for me, what I talked about, you know, it's, it's the prior, prioritizing infrastructure. We can't do anything unless we have that base. Okay. All right, so I'll be happy to not be involved, just get educated um, in parallel. But um, so someone will start the meeting process. Can I? 
just my only two cents, I'm sure y'all would think about it anyway, would just be just to keep in mind what the legislators like. You know, so my, our favorite project might not be something that would get on the list. The main priority with these things is getting in the good graces of the legislator. So just for whatever that's with that. Yeah. And then I mentioned before that I think, you know, Johnny, you're a great person to interact with Bill Dean. Um, <laughs> so I certainly do not want to. Um, so, uh, but yeah, <clears throat> but it's important to interact with him. And then Senator Hackett is is still our uh, Senate guy. Is it related to that one meeting that I zoomed into? So it's like a bunch of different. It could be infrastructure, but it could be housing. It could be yep. okay. Yep. Yeah, I think I listened to that meeting, took notes, and yeah, okay. And in the past, we've usually like shortlist or prioritized four projects, and then you know made the case for those, and then wow. hope they get on the list. That's exciting. Yeah. So what we do, we do still have the big four uh, in terms of our four areas of, of focus, which, uh, if I haven't said it openly, um, I see the, the, those priorities as being multi-year, not just for calendar year 23, um, you know, housing, you don't do it in one year, the infrastructure issues don't get done in one year, broadband <laughs> doesn't get one in, done in one decade, um, economic development, um, these things take time. So, I mean, I, I, I don't, I, what I am saying from a personal perspective, I don't see the change in the calendar to dictate a change in those priorities uh, because none of those four are done, nor will they be done. In, in short order. Now we can tweak, we can add, you know, but we talked this year about trying to maintain the focus. And again, I just don't think we need to take our eye off the ball of those big four. And uh, Brian, you saluted to four different projects. I'm not saying that we ought to go one project per area of focus. You do three for infrastructure and one for something else. Uh, but just thoughts and primarily the main message is uh, it's the big four for 24. Mm. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> hey, Brian. Do you have t-shirts? Yeah. Right. What, are the what are the names? Well, can you email me the, the information about the, the money? The two funds, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yep. And what are they called? Um, so the, the, the one-time 700 million pot is the Community Strategic Investment Fund. Okay. And then every other year, um, the state budget has the capital appropriations. Right. So, um, yep. Thank you. Okay, so before we get into the big strategic stuff, I wanna make sure everybody's comfortable with where the budget's sitting right now. We just added uh, 58, 78, say 100,000 to it. <clears throat> so that takes us to 2.2 million deficit understanding that we probably will never see a $2.2 billion deficit because we're conservative in revenues, because we're never going to overestimate revenues, right? Mm -hmm. And we budget salaries from day one. So if Paige gets all three recruits and they're on staff by 1-1, one, one, that's awesome, but chances are that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So, and there's a lot of, I mean, there's room for supplemental in that process. I think we had the 2.9 million, you know where we're at right now, right? So. No panics, everybody understands. Mm -hmm. We're good. Okay. And, and speaking of uh, police academy, we have a number now, but that's not new money. For it is the um, three recruits mm -hmm. and the shift differential are in the 2024 budget that you already have. So that's already mm -hmm. been factored in. Okay. I got one question. Can you re emphasize where the extra three FT people come from? One's been, one's Samantha. Well, half have been, a quarter of right. Samantha, and then three police recruits. But those three police recruits, I mean, Paige has open positions as well. <coughs> so there, it's kind of a evolving situation. Mm -hmm. We put three on top of it, knowing probably full well that we're not going to have three additional. How many teams. open positions? And how many open positions right now? <coughs> three. And then... Okay. Potentially five by the end of the year as well. So, okay. I have, a, I think, a question that's in line with what you're asking. Um, so, 
just wondering, you know, we had talked some finance committee, it came up a little bit in the last budget meeting about whether we need to do any like adjustments for salaries. Um, is I didn't see it in any of the documents or is any of that in here? We didn't end up with a number for Ben yet, <laughs> but that usually because of the one one wage increases, I think that can be within the um, salaries budget. I don't think we need to specifically budget for that. We have a little bit of slush there. Um, so that'll probably come later down the pike. Okay, yeah, well, I'll just. We're, we'll be, what it's going to go, where we're doing it now is until a new manager comes in that we need to change job code status and all that. So it will come later. Okay. I think it's just important for everybody here to hear when we talk about finance, at least I would like folks to know my perspective on it, that essentially what we, we brought this up briefly last time, but there are some of our staff salaries that are that are lower, essentially, uh, particularly in, um, you know, context of overtime and in the context of um, step increases. Uh, you know, we've had larger increases on, by percentage basis, on, on uh, hourly employees, but uh, some of our salary folks have not sort of kept up in that way. And with market changes impacting not just hourly, but impacting um, you know, salary folks as well, and just the functional realities of like, hey, just working a whole bunch of overtime because, but not tracked as overtime because of the positions that are not filled. So anyway, we have an issue, we have, we have some things to work through in terms of making sure that our team is taken care of and, um, and so I just wanted to make sure that it was, like, from my perspective, that is like foundational to our budget, is how our people are taken care of. So that's why I was bringing it up here. Totally fine that if it's like we're going to work on it in the coming months, but that's why I was bringing it up. And also on my list is, you know, we have the, uh, we promised the three month check in for Johnny, so, uh, which could result in uh, a salary bump. Okay, I have one other. I think it's in the right category, Amy, but it might be in the high-level strategy <laughs> point. Um, so um, I guess the way I'm kind of thinking about the budget is like that it's sort of a conceptual framework that like we know where it could end up if we spent everything, but that we're putting more things in with the possibility of spending them. Um, and I'm generally comfortable with that. Um, I guess, could you just help me understand like what is something that requires approval versus what is something that doesn't so just to take for example we talked about the like you know the paid parking thing is it once it's in the budget is it like there would just be like staff could start spending on a consultant to look into it or something or is there where is the line of when we would have to approve something? What, council? Yeah. Is it $35,000? 30. 30. 30,000. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, at 30,000? Okay. That's the number? 30K? Yeah, it's 30. Okay. And, and I have, <clears throat> excuse me, I have some of these like basic income, paid parking, um, strategic planning. We had a lot of consulting potential. In mm -hmm. I have those as maybes, which means it needs to come back to council to say, yeah, we're going to do it. Let's put out an RFP. Let's go. And this is the time when we want to do it. And I, I, I just put it in as a placeholder. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> if if you know, and, and if we decide, oh, we're going to spend a hundred thousand on this, and then it's a supplemental, or else we're not going to do something else instead. And it's a little bit of semantics, just so you know. All that is budgeted up in the general fund. Not in economic development because if we move it to economic development, it's restricted, right? I don't want it lost down there, so it's up in administrative, and it's marked as such. So um, our administrative consulting fees look high next year for all these placeholders. Mm -hmm. so. cool. Okay, thank you. And we can always, when we see that big number, there'll be a notation to say, this is not really $150,000 for administrative fees. It's 75 for this, 25 for this, whatnot. Right. And on, on my copy of the budget, I have lots of notes over here that you guys don't get, otherwise you get print that big. Um, but anybody's welcome to have the SharePoint link if they want to look at the notes to the side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I just, <clears throat> you know, I just want to say something. Gavin brushed over it. Um, I, I think... Chief Burge, I think you're doing a great job, but I'm, I, I just I hope we can be aggressive in terms of 
filling slots or maybe avoiding more slots being open um, because I know your heart is here with you, but I don't want us to burn you out. I'm, I'm, I'm serious about that. I, mean, I know you, you're just taking it on the chin and just running with it, but I, I think my message to council is I think we need to aggressively and intentionally ensure that we are creating a, a healthy environment for you. And, and I'm afraid that it's not going in that direction right now. Well, I appreciate that. Um, I also will recognize both Amy and Johnny have been really supportive of uh, our current staffing and recruiting situation, and they've offered, um, you know, their assistance and consulting with me on what like, monies we currently have to play with to try to make sure we're keeping valued people, people that would be uh, a hindrance for us to lose, and so we're actively and, and aggressively working towards that right now, in addition to you guys being openly supportive of the police recruit position, I, I, I think we're doing all that we can in this moment. I circulated a, um, mm -hmm. thank you Judy, the most recent report by the DOJ about how it's not just us, it's everybody, which maybe makes you feel a little bit better, but just for a second. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, as a, as a little guy, you, you look at a big report like that and think, wow, if the big agencies are dealing with it, what are we doing? But, you know, I've never been afraid of a David and Goliath fight, so. We'll figure it out. Thank you. I appreciate it. One thing that I think it's 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 a great point to make because Paige was talking to me the other day about if we would take our standards down a little bit, we may be able to get some more if we don't do some of the background stuff. But then she was like, you know what? But I don't want that. Mm -hmm. But that same night, I kid you not, New Center Seven, there's other larger communities that are cutting their qualifications or they're cutting their background stuff to be able to get more people. And I, I hands down, stand up and applaud her for not wanting to change our values and our standards mm -hmm. to get somebody that we don't need. Gotcha. I've always so. told the team, I'd rather run short than make a, a bad hiring choice because that can haunt you for a long time and haunt the community. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm sure they don't agree with me because of how burned out they are, but um, but in the long run, they, they know I'm right, I'm sure. So. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, to that end, um, we've had emails like crazy going back and forth figuring out there's going to be legislation coming at you of a police recruit position, mm -hmm. and where does it say the shift differential is and all that fun stuff. We're trying to get that all together for the six that she can run mm -hmm. and go, go. Yeah. So anything, we're still trying to decide where does it, some of that information live, and um, I think between the four of us, we're going to sit down and have a phone call or a conversation and get it out there so it's ready for the sixth. Okay. Good. Well, I just I hope we keep this conversation going. I mean, I think part of the reason, I mean, you know, we don't have unions here, and that doesn't mean we have any less responsibility to figure out how to advocate for you know workers and for everybody's you know being treated fairly. So I. I don't know. I, it's I'm still pretty new to the institution, so I, there's some I pick up different dynamics of how the conversations happen. But I certainly see it as part of our responsibility to ensure that there's you know a good dialogue, and that means you know encouraging communication about where there's issues. So I'll, I don't want to speak for everybody. At least for me, I, I think it's healthy for us to keep talking about where there, these gaps are, and I hope that y'all will vocally communicate what the needs are rather than have some assumption that you know, council doesn't want to pay for it or something. Thank you. Does anybody have any, I mean, the, I'm sure they'll come up as the conversation goes on. Any other questions about the overall budget and where it sits right now? Do you feel like you've got the information you need to make a decent decision? Um, if it comes to the November 6th meeting, which is fine with me, I think we'll be ready. Um, if, we f if you feel like we need to meet again on Monday, that's <coughs> fine too. We already have it scheduled. I just don't want to beat a dead horse. I feel like um, a budget is a framework. It's not written in stone, and the longer we drag this out, the more little things will pop up, you know. So um, we can be revising and reiterating it again and again and again. We always have room for supplementals. Right. You guys are really good about taking those in. So um, right. I, I just want to ask Johnny, did you get a chance to talk to Amy about the memo we'd like to see in the Package I actually had seen Amy as soon as I walked in this room. Okay. I just got back. Okay. So, okay. 
just suffice to say, we just like to see a memo that for the public can know exactly where we are. Um, last night, uh, a candidate forum, um, there were two candidates that, that differed. Uh, Carmen was more right <laughs> than, than the other she person. She was right. really right. Yeah, Gar <laughs> Carmen was really right. And the other person, so you know, that's out there. You know, so um, you know, there, there might be some concerns in the public about, well, really, what's, what's going on? So if we could uh, have something that in plain English explains well, yeah, it was a $3 million deficit, and now all this stuff happened, and now it's here, and now we're breaking even. How'd that happen? And this person is saying, we're still deficit spending, blah, blah, blah. Do you just want 2023, or do you want history? I'll say, I, I think as far as comfortable as you are, but one of the, one of the things that I think, think was really healthy last year is we actually looked at a lot of you know, background information. Um, so I, I feel like a lot of things that happened last year helped inform where we are this year in terms of understanding the depth of things. So I don't think you necessarily need to go back a long way, but I think providing some historical perspective, because it factors in some of the big spending on big projects and, you know, and then similarly like looking forward a little bit that these are the, that we're not unaware that we have, that we, we are looking at passing a deficit budget, that, but with an awareness of what that means. And putting that in writing, I think, just so we can look back on it, too. One of the things, though, too, for me, is that an, an, anticipated, an anticipated deficit and a projected deficit or what we see might become a deficit and an actual deficit are not the same thing. And people can't reconcile that in their... It seems like people can't reconcile that in their heads. But that's just, I mean, that's just. It's seemed, a little bit weird because of governmental accounting is such as it is. Right. I mean, right. any and other you, you corporation, have, you, you, have, budget. Has, you have to do it that way. Mm -hmm. But I feel like people don't understand that it's not, like, it's not. Right. Yeah. We're, yeah, we're sitting on revenue of six to nine hundred thousand dollars in these wrecks that has never been budgeted on purpose because we don't know when it's gonna happen. So if we budget it, it darn well better happen, right? Yep. So that's that's the difference. You're always super conservative on your revenues and we're probably a little over um, budgeted on expenses because that's the other thing you cannot go beyond, you know, if I've got 500,000, I've only got 500,000, that's mm -hmm. it. So um, I think this budget is, I think 2024 is as much um, closer to, I mean, we've really looked at the details and we know what, what the contracts are in there. It's not to say we didn't miss something, trust me, there's mm -hmm. $17 million. Um, but I feel like if, we, if it's not there, it's in the next line and we can borrow that from that line. So, and that, it's a little tighter than 2022's was for sure, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so can I just, I don't know if I'm understanding what you're looking for entirely, but would it be useful to have the last three, four years, I don't know, of projected deficit, actual deficit, projected deficit, actual deficit, so that, you know, you can look back and go, ah, oh, this is a thing they do. The thing is, is that you get into COVID and the numbers don't right. work yeah. anymore. Right. Well, yeah. There's a big <laughs> gap for 2020 and 2021 in accounting that's just, yeah, right. I'm, I'm happy to look and I see if it makes sense. I think you last year and this year, but when you're, right. I well, can, I also, I can look back. I mean, I agree with Gavin, we don't have to go back forever, but when we started, you know, when we established our capital budget lines, um, I mean, that was when I think we first started thinking about right-sizing budgets, and, you know, I think there was this philosophy before that we just sit on this money, um, and uh, it's why that $700 million from the state is out there, because, I mean... They've just been building up that rainy day fund and not investing it. So, um, and so instead of giving you thirty-five thousand, they can give you three hundred fifty thousand. Right, right, right. That's what they do. So I think that's part of, to me, what makes sense to like a, you know, a lay person is, you know, just kind of this has been intentional. So, mm -hmm. so in terms of communicating it to citizens. Would it make sense, given Johnny, you talked about putting out a newsletter, that maybe the first newsletter have that as a focus? I think we're going to have to get it out there faster than a newsletter. Um, Gavin and I talked, and we actually, I, Gavin and I talked, I'll just say that. <clears throat> and if we can communicate our story, 
about the budget to the paper and not instead of letting the paper communicate it, then we need to get our story there versus us being the story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to try to work on. Okay. And they they have a hard time getting the numbers right. Cool. Anyway, it's, 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 it's so not, are you the thing of writing an article? We're, we're a press okay. release or something. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah, and I was just saying, since we're going to be talking about the budget the next two meetings, that you know, if a memo could include uh, the ordinance, uh, or, or however it comes, um, again, just for folks to, to read and, and, and not be concerned. And I don't really know how much last night impacted people, but you know, you you heard two candidates with different views, and somebody. Never have facts, picked so. up on that. Yeah. Well, the great thing is, is Carmen was also referred to. It's on the website. Yeah. You know, so it's factual. Yeah. So it's in council packet. Also, I'm going to kind of trust the person who's been sitting in every meeting, attending them all, and paying attention yeah. the entire time. Probably a little more than. In a perfect world, that makes 100% <coughs> sense. Well, well, and you know, newbies are at a disadvantage, so mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, and also, I mean, to speak on that, like being at a disadvantage and then creating a narrative that is kind of alarmist are two entirely different things. Like, okay, you can be at a disadvantage and communicate misinformation, but when you're given the correct information and the language that you use behind communicating that information is everything. And what was published or what was what was the way that the way quite that they answered the questions on the, the League of Voters website was the sky is falling, the sky is falling. Very alarmist to not correct. Yeah. Right. And nobody needs that. Well, it's a it's a redeemable situation. Yeah. <laughs> it can certainly be fixed. It's just information. Well and it's one that Gavin recognized <laughs> that alarmist <laughs> the uh, narrative was put out there. Um, so, you know, so I think it is important that we correct it. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so from 1 to 145, I had more of a, like a high-level strategy talking about uh, infrastructure housing. I, could, I think we've done a few of these things, but I just, if, you, if we needed to expand some of this talking points, we never seem to have enough time to talk about affordable housing versus housing. Do it now. I mean, mm -hmm. it doesn't particularly 100% relate to budget, but it's a good time for everybody to sit down and, and figure out where your heads are in the big four, right? For 2024, if there's something that we haven't talked about yet that needs to go on budget, that certainly needs to come to the forefront. Um, Shani, did you forward that email to me, the 28 questions? <laughs> I said twenty. I don't know what the number is. Oh, you know, it's it's a it's a stat. It's a stat. So you, you probably know this. I, I, well, I, I mean, I just to start the process. I, I hear you know fifty thousand dollars towards broadband. What's that fifty thousand dollars going to do? I mean, I don't care. It's in my budget. If you tell me to spend it on a consultant, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. No problem. But fifty thousand dollars. What's that going to buy us, and where is it going to get us? Is it enough? Is it too much? Is it well? Not enough. I, I mean, I, I think th two or three of us submitted some numbers. My my fifty was was intentionally, you know, not targeted on one thing. It's, it's not just to be thrown in the pool of money trying to get, uh, you know, the, the the build out of of, of the of the backbone, uh, but responding to technical issues. Um, uh, maybe getting a part-time uh, uh, entry-level somebody to be able to re hey, respond to calls and fix little nitnoid issues along the way so that the concerns that folks have don't just linger. Like I get, a, get the impression that some of them are. So it wasn't like, it, it was a bunch of little things that my 50000 was going for. Again, not, not to extend the build out, but to fix Day to day routine issues. And, and I put um, broadband in, I don't remember the amount of money, 
nor do I know how to fix it, but I know it needs to get fixed. What's happened so far isn't working. And two, I don't think it's acceptable to have, in the end, whatever, a hundred or so places that have it. I'm fortunate. I do. $45 that I can just split with my, because uh, I'm in a duplex, so it's twenty. Two fifty a month for internet mm. cannot beat that, and I shouldn't just be the only place in, in town. So, uh, so I don't know how it should be spent, but I think people we have to figure out what are the ways that we can move that this thing forward. Mm -hmm. well, and I, I think that's really, really, really unpopular opinion again, and that's why I don't ever write about it because it's such an unpo it's an unpopular opinion. And it is that grouping of services. Are we going to invest the money, which is going to be more than $50,000, to get there so that we can have broadband, phone, internet, cable? Or, you know, it, it, for just the general consensus from talking to people who I work with, it's like that would be great, but also it's going to be an additional $45 a month versus, you know, we, 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 like, like, like I said, I, I'm asking a question. Are we going to figure out and are we willing to spend the money that it's going to take to build out that piece of infrastructure, to build out the phone, the phone service and to build out the cables? Like, right, because if you don't bundle, if you, <laughs> so don't bundle you still got well, a spectrum uh, in your back. I, I, so I, I acknowledge that I may be in a minority. You know, I have a phone system, twenty or $32 consumer cellular. Sure. Twenty. To fifty, so you know, sixty dollars a month. Um, I have an antenna. I don't get cable. Right. So you know, I'm spending my, my t telecommunications is less than sixty dollars a month. Right. I guess if you want to have all this cable crap. I mean, what what it is? What it is? What it is? I mean, but and that and that's the that's going to be the question that remains. Are we committed to? offering those services? How much is it going to take to offer those services? Are we going to have buy-in from the community? Um, because I know that there have been a couple people who have been interested and then kind of fell back when they understood that it was going to be additional, an additional expense, even though they would like to participate with the broadband. So are we going to spend that money? Are we going to commit to spending that money? Are we going to pay for the expertise um, that's required to figure that piece out? Um, if we do, then it's going to be more than $50,000. Are we just going to commit to rolling out the internet piece alone, the broadband piece alone, and not expand on it? Those so, are questions that I think that yeah. need to be answered. So coming from my perspective, yes, we are committed to answering those questions, providing those services, providing uh, residents a good deal. Um, and if you a la carte, as I do, you're still not going to get to the 80 to $120 cable bill that, that folks are, are paying for. So we are committed to that. The $50,000 is not going to solve, not going to answer those questions. That's, that's not what it's about. <clears throat> but however we end up with respect to broadband, and I'll, I'll go ahead and say this while I have the floor, um, we have multiple options. Having our own thing would be great. Having our own Back, fiber backbone throughout the village where, um, a, as it is, uh, a, a municipal utility and folks are just paying that as part of their utility bill and getting the level of services and speed that uh, the legacy folks were never going to give us <laughs> until we started offering that. Um, you know, having the, the, the customer service uh, contacts and all of that, yes, that is what I believe the vision should be. Again, where all those dollars are coming to the village, that would be great. Barring that, there are other options. I mean, Cincinnati Bell is, is well, Cincinnati Bell Technology Services, that portion of the business is now called Alta Fiber. So that's the name of, that you'll hear uh, when you have a Cincinnati Bell coming through the village with their fiber backbone. It is my understanding that a unilateral decision outside of council was made that we were not going to talk to those folks. I disagree with that. So we, we, we will not discard 
uh, what uh, the, the, the project that Greene County has undertaken, where they have granted Alta Fiber um, the, the license, if you will, you know, to come through the, the, the area, you know, with their backbone. So having said that, I don't, I don't want to take it any more time. Short answer is yes. We are committed to having all of those things, educating people to, to let them know. If they have cable now, I would, I would submit that the average bill is getting close to $100. But when you, like in my house, and, and I probably have more streaming services than one family ought to, ought to be allowed to have, but, um, but we're not paying that amount of money and we're getting the same thing. I mean, yeah, if you wanna pay $120 and still have 200 channels of which you only watch five, that's fine, if that's what you wanna do. But if you want to get faster speed, less money, and only have access to what you are going to watch, um, phones, everybody is, is an internet protocol phone. Even if you're getting it from that uh, Verizon or whoever, it's an IP phone. Uh, so you can get Magic Jack or anything else, Uma. They're t they're, so this is, this is almost rocket science. <laughs> But it's just not that hard. So the short answer again is yes. If we are committed to providing that, whether it is our homegrown system or we do end up riding the back of Alta Fiber or whoever else is coming through. Um, so uh, enough on that. And um, so conversations are still going on. Uh, I will be um, right after I got a two fifteen with Thor um, this afternoon. So so we're moving forward. We do want to talk about these problems. Uh, there's questions, I guess, that the village staff has, and I will uh, at least begin the conversation with Thor today to address those. So just a question for Amy, and then, I, then I, I'll be done with this part if everybody else is done with it. Um, the, how much have we spent, and I, I do remember seeing these numbers a while ago, but if you can just tell, how much money have we spent on broadband versus what we're, Zero. Nothing. Everything's been granted up until now. Okay. Versus uh, not counting we're... staff time. Right. I mean, so yeah, sure. But uh, for me, staff time counts. <laughs> I know. Well, I but, don't know uh, how many hours I sway. Right. <laughs> Johnny lives with right. Right. <laughs> versus versus uh, what we versus what the re what the revenue. Is We've probably. got fifteen thousand three hundred dollars in revenue. Okay. For since we've had the project. Okay. And have we figured out the billing? We've got issues. more. We've got more money. Yeah, um, Elise did that. an audit Thank you. and, and sent Thanks questions just two Thanks days ago to Thor saying, you know, and, and we finally just had to pull their stuff into ours and say, let us do it because it wasn't happening. Yeah. So um, she just did an audit. There's just several accounts that don't have like the right provisioning date. Right. So we are billing the right people. She said, I'm actually billing some businesses. I was told to bill them, so I'm billing them. So. We're still trying to figure out the differentiation. We're ready to kick it into gear on one one if that's the case for the businesses that have gotten free for a year. Okay. Um, she wanted to put a placeholder on the bill, and I'm like, mm, another couple weeks. Give us a couple weeks. But we've well, also got some businesses that said as soon as it's not free, I want to cancel. Okay. Uh, I said 28 questions just to give you a fast update. Um, staff and I watched the Zoom meetings again. Eric and I was with Thor and with SpringsNet uh, staff. Uh, we sent 28 questions to Thor and them on October 10th. Uh, Thor replied that he would get back to me after he got the answers, and I have not. I actually talked to him Saturday, and he hadn't had a chance you to. Sent, you yeah. sent the communication yeah. on October 10th? Sorry, that's what I said. You sent the questions. I sent the questions. I sent the questions. On October 10th. On the 10th. And they're working on giving me the answers. Okay. So we can have our third meeting. Okay. Because there's a lot of, a lot of questions sure. that we ask. Um, uh, I can give you an old ten, recap. 10 days, over, worth, ten days right. worth of questions? Well, it could be. Because we're asking them for a lot of information that is lacking mm -hmm. for our our needs okay. um, to be able to give an update to be able to figure out what the next steps are. Okay. Um, and it has taken a lot of time. Uh, I know that every council meeting somebody is asking about broadband, but we're talking broadband five to six days a week. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of things that we've uncovered. There's a lot of things that we've discovered 
people not getting billed, people that got billed. Um, so we're correcting issues, but it all comes down to why isn't the other 50 something people hooked up? It all goes back to they paid a contractor to do it. They've already paid the contractor to do it. There's no money to pay another contractor to do it. The contractor's been paid. Mm -hmm. So we're waiting on the contractor to come back. Okay. So, and we're paying, well, I'm, we're not paying. Uh, Community Foundation pay, is paying and Thor is paying a uh, local hardware guy $70 an hour to hook it from the house to there. The other thing that we're not doing is we're not charging for any equipment in the house. He, he being Josue, told Elise not to charge for equipment. So we don't, we're not charging for the equipment for the people to use in their house. So, we're, so I mean, to, to cover that $50,000, we're going to need 83 people on for a whole year, right? So 50, this is not going to be this huge money maker just on the internet. 83, I mean, how many people are actually going to sign up? 1,800, 2,000, I don't know, um, 3,600 people, how many households are 1,800? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're never going to get rich off the internet alone. So we have to figure out, do we want to be the smallest utility in the world, <laughs> which is probably not cost efficient, or are we, accountants don't have vision, so I know that. Or is there a greater vision to provide a utility through some other means that gives the village bigger, better way to live than most rural organizations? So just my super quick two cents is I was sort of saying yes to $50,000 in the budget to try to answer some of those questions, not to try to like sign up 83 people and get back the money. Right. I'm like waiting on the like, is this a viable project? And it seems like you're trying to like work toward the answers. And so I was okay with spending some money, assuming that we might need to spend some money to answer that question before we decided whether we were gonna do some, you know, larger scale. Yeah, we're hoping Kevin can help us get some clarity with Thor. There's been some um, resistance on telling us who's paid what and where, and because it's not our money, it's right. the school's money. So we really don't have, he's right, it's not our money. But now it's our utility, so we have to make sure it's run appropriately, and it's frustrating the village, obviously. Oh, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure. And so that's where, you know, plan A in my mind is to do a build-out, have it be a village utility. We own it. We don't need to get 100%. 100% of every dollar, you know, whereas right now, I'm whatever I'm spending is going to Spectrum. Um, I'd like to give it to you, um, but, but, you know, I'm going to spend that money. We, we all are. I mean, everybody, who cable or, or, or not, you're, you're going to spend the money, and it would be great if all or most of it stayed in the village. Having said that, you know, if it just is not going to work, it's just not going to work, and we'll go another way, and it will be somebody else providing the service, and the dollars, same dollars. Well, I think there's a lot of room for partnerships that yeah. can get us where we need to go. Right. And, and I think that's where Johnny and I are coming from. Let's not try to muscle through on our own. Let's look and see who else can help us get there. Because yeah. somebody else is already running fiber in, or will be in the village. Yeah. Maybe we can save them some grief. Right. And that's, and that's my point. I think what I share with Johnny is we, if we say to Alta Fiber, okay, don't for, forget what Hostway said. He's not here anymore. Don't listen to him. You know, but, but, you're not starting from scratch, correct? When you come here, so acknowledge that. So if it costs you ten cents, we're saving you thirty cents. So we expect to get thirty percent, you know, of, of that revenue. So. Um, so I want to come back to what Carmen said because this is I don't know about this stuff really, and so Carmen, I think you were saying that you know people who feel that getting broadband from the village won't really meet their needs for the phone, their cable, whatever needs, that, that it wouldn't meet their needs. That's a part of it, yeah. Is there something else? That's, that's, the, that's kind of the general consensus, yeah. And the other piece was my personal, like, what I, what I just said about what we were spending versus oh, what we were making. Okay. Well, and then I thought, Kevin, you were saying sort of in response to what Carmen was saying that one, it's 
potentially we could do this mm -hmm. uh, as a village. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, right. Right now, it's a mess. That's what I've gotten from Johnny. It's a mess. We're in a mess right now. Kevin, potentially we could do it on our own. Mm -hmm. Potentially we could do it as a public-private partnership, mm -hmm. regardless of how that is. That it would be possible also to address the kind of concerns Carmen was saying people have by yes. giving them information. Yeah, about yeah, yeah, that. yeah. You you know it 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 won't it won't it might look like magic, but it won't be. You can go from whatever phone number you have, whoever you're paying for that phone. It can be all internet, and you have the exact same phone number. And, and you'll have fa faster speeds for whatever internet you have. Um, in terms of television watching, you know, if you want, well, if you want HBO, it's called Max now. You can pay $15 a month, and it doesn't have to be part of a $200 cable bill. Right. You like YouTube pick, TV. Pick the it's next an app. thing. It's an app. They're all yeah. apps now. Yeah. 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 The world it's is cutting the right. cable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, these folks who are concerned about cutting their cable, they'll be the last ones with the cable because everyone's going away. Because again, I don't have to pay $200 for a bunch of cable channels I never watch. I a la carte it and get what I want and I'm still way under what I would be paying a cable company. So, I know I just said, I, I know I would love to talk about the, the housing piece and the, so just, does it feel like you have a, you have a decent sense for the fifty thousand. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a stopgap to get yeah. us moving yeah. and figure out what we need to take the next step. And I think that Johnny had said by mid November we're going to have a better idea. Maybe after today we'll have a better idea from Rebecca. Um, what can we do to help? Mm -hmm. How can we move this along? How mm -hmm. we can get those fifty extra houses done? If it has to be done around the you know, and then. Don't worry about the contractor. Let's just do something different. Then let's do that. But it is kind of band-aided together right now. So you add 50 more houses, and those bandages are going <laughs> to get a little loose when somebody has a tech issue at nine o'clock at night, mm -hmm. and there's a voicemail box. Correct. Right. And and that's so. absolutely one thing that the fifty dollars fifty thousand should go to address. So if it's okay, I'll I'll throw out the housing piece. Um, and I guess maybe I'll start by just saying, for me, there is like a hierarchy of these goals, and the housing piece is is number one. Like, to be honest, like broadband is like far behind housing in terms of from a priority perspective. So I just want to say that out loud because I do think at some point we have to like figure out which things do we invest in and how much. So I think um, we. Meg and I have been doing some talking in preparation for a housing committee meeting on November the 9th. Um, I think we're, I hope, the hope is that we'll have a full like conversation at the council meeting immediately after that. To you know, I think what we talked about the housing committee is that we would need to be having full conversations at council about what's going on. So I just want to let folks know that that's you know, still um, a priority, you know, that's very much a priority. I think what, so I, just, I guess use this as a chance, high level strategy, to say what I think I've heard, which you know, Carmen said it really well last night. Re, you know, reiterating what Denise has talked about around the focus on apartments. I think the council, what I've heard from the council, is pretty clear. It feels like there's interest in affordable, I think particularly workforce housing. There's an interest in um, in apartments, um, and so I look. I, I am assuming that the sort of mandate from council and then as it pertains to the housing committee, and then I think as it pertains to budget, is to try to figure out what is the sort of the largest scale apartment, um, you know, affordable housing projects we can do, and working on that question. Um, so when I see the like $100,000 in the budget, I'm assuming that similar to the broadband thing, I'm not expecting that's gonna like build us two units or something. I'm assuming those are like dollars that are gonna that we would have some flexibility to put toward what capacity do we need to move essentially development projects forward on building apartments. Um, so that's that's what I, I just to reflect back what I had in mind. I think what Meg and I have been talking about is we've been trying to move toward this housing committee, and I guess making sure that that feels like it's generally in line with what other council members or staff had in mind. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, I guess I'll ask a question. Um, the hundred thousand dollars, I don't have a problem putting it in there because we will probably need it, and, and the housing committee can figure out how to spend it. Um, <coughs> Meg's been dealing with the peninsula. I think I actually brought it up the last time, so I want to bring it up again this time. CBE is for commercial development, correct? Is everybody on board with that? Because that's it, and that's all. Home Inc. is blasting Meg. Need an answer to want us to change a bunch of things. Me too. I'm you know? getting emails. Yeah. Oh, wow. Central, Central Business Central. and Education. Well, Center Center for Business. Center for education. Business. Mm -hmm. It's where, you know, where I would like to go the opposite anymore. way. I've talked to Lisa Abel, and we need to start marketing. We can't just have apartment complexes on the CBE. We need last night we need businesses to be able to support residents and we need residents to be able to support business mm -hmm. and if we put apartment complexes on our business place then we're shooting ourselves in the foot again so i would like to be able to direct have the council direct meg or myself to say stop it's off the table because it is not we have to change a bunch of stuff, correct, Meg, to be able to get it Yeah, done. there's covenants that restrict it. It's a heavier lift than other properties, and I will just say generally, because there's covenants that restrict the use. We have to change those. It's zone PUD, several, I, I, I just talked to Nisla about, about it, but it's been at least 15 years since it's been zoned to PUD, and the documentation of it, you probably have to go back through and do another preliminary PUD and then a final PD. Um, I did reach out to our attorney to try to find out for sure, yeah, like... we got a 3.30 meeting. Yeah, yeah, to try to find out for sure, like, what the steps would be, because in talking to Emily, I committed to finding out, um, you know, how long it would really take and what legally you would have to do to change covenants, because it sounds like they're a little bit different than CCNRs for, like, a residential development, and then also how you would, what the process would be for an existing PUD <coughs> zone property to change that to then um, residential, I guess. But then that's just kind of, to me, that's just like the underneath line part. It's also not taking into consideration like the larger framework of having housing there and what that means to the community, which might take a little bit more, I think, communication if we were really endeavoring to do that um, with the community because we've always had everything focused in the village as we're residents and would be residential and like they're so connected pedestrian wise and so I would if we we're going to do housing out that far I probably want to do more planning to add more pedestrian infrastructure and potentially other uses to make it more sustainable long term and not be just like a big box of housing so that, that's those are just my initial planning thoughts but then I am looking into like the legal framework underneath it for her just to kind of clear it up for us is what how long it may take for her uh, to do that um, you know I, I don't apparently that parcel for some reason was elevated higher from the Ohio Housing Finance Agency I yeah I don't know I mean I have not talked with them so I don't know why that's the mm -hmm. case but there is the property across the street that Donald 100. Yeah, I don't think, I think from what Emily's told me is that it's only this location yeah. that would score that high, which is why I've been kind of dropping in trying to do the research and into yeah, it, weird. just because it does sound like a great potential, but then there's just a lot of other things. Staff-wise, you know, it's, it's like just to drop things, it's hard because we obviously don't have, we have limited resources, so... That's why it would be nice to have a clear direction from the council, but I know we also don't want to put you on the spot right now to have to tell us something no, like do. that. I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do because okay. you're, you're now down a rabbit hole that, I, that 
you was forced down and we've had to drop the ball on other things because this is a time deadline and and we're mm -hmm. no is not an answer from staff and now she's well, it has never been identified as housing since I've been here. Right, right, right. Yeah. And we're going to... Yeah, she, she's been reaching out to me as well, and, and I responded. I said, I thought it was shut down, like our last budget meeting. Right, but now meeting. she wants to change everything. Yeah, it's... Perfect. I wasn't here at the last budget meeting either, so sorry yeah. if I... No, no that's fine. That's yeah. right. It's just, it's just, it just seems a little painful to consider to try to wrap my head around everything I as I understand it you know there's this overlaying thing and and even though the village stops here there's this thing that does cross over to the CBE that's somehow qualified for this thing but for this this consideration you know but if it is the village intent to market the CBE for business um, then we're not going to market it as housing we've got glass farm if we no, now i don't think i don't think whatever emily is talking about applies to glass farm somehow there's something magical about being well east, it's again west it's, of the, east. it's the scoring thing yeah so i think we need to be really cautious about making a decision right now without i, I mean i think different council members have different pieces of this mm -hmm. you know i mean um I think we've all kind of pushed back on what about Glass Farm or what about someplace else, all right? So I guess remembering apartments, 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 here is an opportunity to get funding to do something. And I agree it's not something we ever contemplated. Um, but again, I would just caution, I don't think any one council member has enough information to say yay or nay today. Sure, but we, we do have the we can speak on it, yay sure. or nay or not. So this is my what I'm going to offer. Um, the thing that's that concerns me the most is that Home Inc. is taking time from our staff for research that they could do, and I that I don't appreciate that. They are capable of doing the research on their own. <coughs> the zoning stuff, of course, you have to ask questions about that. But they have an attorney, um, and they're they're. They're, they're taking away staff's time working on something that they could be working on. The, and there's more to it than that, but at the very least, that's what I'm gonna offer. And now I know, I've gotten s several emails from different people and there's rumors circulating about this property already. And now I know exactly why Emily was wanting to reach out and have a meeting with me specifically. And saying all that to say, I don't think it's fair that 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 the organization is taking up staff's time on things that they can research themselves. So, so to Brian's point, <coughs> which I agree with, we, we, not, I will admit I don't know enough to make a full sense about the situation, quite honestly. But my question is, can we investigate the situation without actually flipping the zoning, without actually doing anything? From a zoning perspective, just finding out what the possibilities are, and if it's a matter of applying for some grant funds, at that point, will we have had to <coughs> change the zoning? I think so. It's a very unique situation mm -hmm. from a be able to answer that like black and white because mm -hmm. of all the history of it on mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. but can the covenants being restricted and the PUD zoning being designated quite a while ago. Um, I mean, if you want to just give us a quick answer, I guess I was thinking a couple of times, maybe I should just say, you know, initially, no, we can't do that. Because, but I, I tend to be more like, let me look into it and think about it, talk to everyone about it first type person. Mm -hmm. But like, really, if I was going to give, you know, just a quick, I mean, it, it's co more complicated than probably 75% than of the other properties that they may approach us and ask us about, which means more time up front mm -hmm. for them and for us. Mm -hmm. And so me, for me to give a good answer, I have to look into I have to spend time to give a good answer. Mm -hmm. So if, if that means then no, I guess, I should say. Because <laughs> I have to spend time. <laughs> may, uh, may, I mean, <laughs> did Denise, or did you ask Denise, Yeah. would we re have to refund the Army Corps of Engineering grant 
because they did this for central business and education and not. And that was one of my questions to Amy. She didn't know the answer to that. But it also has grant funding. That's I forgot that piece too. Correct. That that built the infrastructure and the roads. So I would hesitate to say for sure until I knew that, and I'd have to find. I don't know. I've never. I haven't gone taken the Army Corps grant through before, personally. So I don't know what kind of restrictions they may have on how the properties developed under a different premise than I'm what sure it was covenants. granted for. Well, at one point, Chris Connor indicated that that grant had already been cycled out, and so okay. um, and that we don't have obligations anymore. And okay. yeah. I would think he would be willing to. Um, share that information with um, and who was it Chris Connor. Okay. So and Amy Amy B used to work at Coolidge Wall. Oh, um, so an attorney. Yeah, okay. but uh, we were told, and again, you know, maybe we would hear something different. But we were told that um, there were no longer any uh, restrictions. Yeah. Well, that's that just yeah. Done. That's great. And then those are the kind of things that I would have to explore, you know what I yep. mean? And like, yep. if it was just a, another piece of property that was just zoned to PUD and <coughs> zoning it to PUD, it actually might be easier, mm -hmm. honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, May? Well, sorry. Well, can I just just make sure we're seeing? But so, I knew I talked about this a little bit. So I think I have a sense, but I should, just so we're all on the same page, it definitely takes more work to figure out whether or not this can be done, mm -hmm. right? And what. What Emily is, is, is suggesting essentially that it is a unique enough opportunity that it is worth looking into it because of the scale of the prospect of the project, right? Is that is that the basic for, formulation here? Yes. That like, if, so just to be clear, if we were being asked to do a whole bunch of work over building one non-affordable house, we would definitely say, no way, this is silly. Yeah. What we're looking at is, is there's like, we have this goal that we want to try to figure out how to do affordable housing. It's hard to figure out how to do it at scale. There, this is a, the low-income housing tax credit, which what Emily's saying, what Emily told me is she said, I've been looking for the, an opportunity like this for 10 years, and I'm not sure that, and it's never come up, and I, I am worried that it won't come up for another 10 years. So all my only thing, so when we talked about this, is like if we can figure out whether or not there's moves that can be made to see whether it's even possible, then I would my I would say let's look into it. If looking into it is a is an undoable prospect in and of itself, or we need to have some resource allocated toward doing it, then I think obviously it's worth a different conversation. But I was sort of under the that that was when we talked. My perspective was, hey, if we can figure out whether or not this is possible, well, let's figure that out because it seems like a unique enough opportunity. I, I don't know enough about what goes into how difficult that is, how long it takes, how many things. I just know that we're all talking about trying to figure out how to do apartments and it's gonna be hard to do apartments. And somebody who does apartments, you know, who does housing for a living is saying that this is a unique opportunity. We should at least look at it and then if it doesn't work out, well, then we'll be back where we were before, trying to figure out how to do a scaled project. So, I haven't talked to him. Um, I mean, I've had some text. So to me, there's a lot of information that I would want to know. Like, well, did they submit that? How did it even happen that that property was identified? And is there a possibility that some others that we've been talking about could be? But to piggyback on what you're saying, it is going to be a really tough nut to crack to build affordable rental housing. Really tough. And it's very competitive, the tax credit projects. And that is the best way, I mean, the best way other than some unconventional kind of ways that I think we should look into too. So um, it is worth looking at. I think I can answer the first part just to say that this is, and I don't know if it's appropriate. Like we could consider asking Emily to come into the next council meeting or something. Um, what about the housing people? Like housing committee. Housing yeah. committee. So uh, we we could totally to take it out as a, so this, yeah, this is what Meg and I talked about. Yeah. So the reason the re so it was reached out with the idea of it coming to housing yeah. committee, okay. and then the only re and the reason that that at least my initial response is we need to talk about it with council is because of two things. One, the timing, that the housing committee sort of isn't yet sort of highly functioning to be able to know how to field a request like this. 
And then the reason we're bringing it up now is because organically it is happening, and we're this housing committee is like not meeting until November the 9th. I don't know what the timeliness of the issue is of whether or not. Yeah, she had said she couldn't wait till November 9th. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. The reason this is happening is because they're essentially the 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 um, the criteria. It's in like its second draft phase, mm -hmm. and the criteria essentially creates a. You know, you can. The reason they know this particular property and not other properties is because there's all these different things they can put in based on actual maps mm -hmm. and information. And this is just the one property here that spits out answering that it works on the current draft. She's always been, you know, the, the, um, it, it sounds as though it could change, but that is likely that this is where it works. How many, so how many, I have not met with her, then, and, then, and then, I, then I will be done with this part. How many council members have met with Emily about this? Just I talked to her on the phone. Okay. Yeah. I've only gotten texts, but it kind of like what Marianne said, I don't really have any details and beyond the story. I'm texts asking, do you want to talk? And again, my first response after our last budget meeting was, I was told it was dead. And then her response was, there's, there's, there were no, no insurmountable um, obstacles. Um, well, and, time time is your insurmountable obstacle. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's always the whole thing. Well, no, I see on. our goal going on the Tomorrow. housing committee mm -hmm. is, our right. goal in the future is to direct all these types of things, requests to housing committee, right? I mean, that would be our goal. So then we wouldn't even have to have this type of informal kind of discussion sure. now. Um, and also just to add that Emily did um, offer assistance in multiple ways. And I said, I'll think about that, you know, just so, just to, <laughs> she, I'm, I'm, I'm not, yeah, I'm not, it's not, it's really not personal. I mean, it's, yeah. it's fine, it's not personal. Can we use that time slot on Monday? I mean, if we... Well, so talk about this thing that's like here. speculative. Actually, what? There's actually a mayor's court in here at that same time, which is not insurmountable. We yeah. have a schedule, but I'm just saying. <laughs> You mean have a special council meeting? Sure. I mean, if we've yeah, got we've got not. Monday from four not to a six. Special council meeting because you have a budget session and that's what's been noticed. And so, if it becomes a housing session, it's not a budget session. But don't we have twenty four hours to announce or if something? So we're asking to change it. I'm just saying we have that time slot. This is time sensitive. Seems like well, I mean, we care about, about it. We're talking about it now, and, and we're talking about budget, so. So we just have her come in. I did have a question about to Meg. If you decide, okay, we're going to permit housing there, I, my, it would be my thought that you would then be restricted in whatever commercial enterprises or in the industry yes. you could put it's in gone. that place, which is yeah. a center for business That's gone. and education. Yeah. You're not going to put some <laughs> grinding thing next to your apartment building, right? I mean, it's that one very location careful. that we have for that. There's no works that's taken. This is the a, a location that's set out for that purpose, and and Denise's great regret was that, that that was not marketed to the extent that it should have been, because as we all know, that's what starts dropping people's costs is when that kind of income starts coming in. That's our one right for development spot, and if you and put housing there, then you're gonna yeah, push. definitely. There's a lot to consider. I don't view it as me approving it. I hope that's not coming across that way. I'm not wanting to approve or authorize anything. I view myself as a conduit of that, that, uh, telling people how to get in front of the council to make the right decisions. So I don't view it as me making any decisions. I'm trying to relay the facts Correct. to everyone. But I just think you have to put that on the table along with, boy, we've got the greatest thing ever and this is going to make your goal, this goal happen. There's also this goal. Will it impact that goal? Yeah. you got to weigh those things. If we're moving housing there, we'll be moving the central book for business and education at the glass one. And I'll just say, like, so for example, I would be totally open to that. Meaning, like, if for whatever reason this thing spits out a thing and it only will let you do it here, but and then we could have industrial over there. And I, my point is, is I don't look at this as like as like a fixed thing. I don't, and I, and when you say like that everything's last minute with them, I don't have the history to know like how the relationship has been. And so whether like people who've been around longer would have a better sense of like how and when to say the sky is falling and how to respond to it. I don't know. I just, the big piece I come back to is just, I think everybody really wants to work on housing. Building apartments is gonna be hard. 
this is a, it, it sounded like it was an opportunity at least worth looking at. If I could completely see that it would weigh out, that it might not work. If, if the deed can't be changed, then it's, it was a no, like then it's, that was just like, well, we just can't. So when we were talking, I was just thinking, well, let's just find that out. But if even that is its own significantly heavy lift, then I think we could think about, do we want to say, hey, we will look into this, but here's how much it's going to cost. And then we have, you know, that idea you're saying of like, maybe they have to help pay to answer the question. They're working with a developer, the St. Mary um, Development. This is, you know, maybe they have soft cost out, maybe they can help pay for it. But to me, it's it's just a matter of trying to balance these dynamics. There's no... Well, I think it's important for us to get the right information in order to make an informed yeah. decision. Of course. Now, if we, in terms of potential businesses coming in, if we fill up the rest of the, what, the 22 acres uh, with apartment complex, we call it Mary Jane Farms uh, <laughs> or, or something like that, um, and, and then we, we've... we've We've gotten way down the road <laughs> to, to Nirvana. I mean, we've accomplished a lot. You know, if if that's where we go, so fine. Businesses who haven't yet beat down our door, but if business come and they want somewhere, they'll have to go someplace else because we we have filled up the remaining space with houses, apartments, or dwelling places where where we will benefit from. On, on, on multiple levels. And it may be dollar to dollar income tax withholding versus business income. Because mm -hmm. our businesses aren't wealthy in Steel Springs. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't pay a lot of taxes. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I get where she's coming from, but you make a good point. If we're talking about affordable housing, a win-win would be having 100 more people paying Yellow Springs income tax, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're not going to be huge income tax payers either so you know yeah and there are other properties the property that Rick Donahoe owns mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the plant property mm -hmm. which eventually we're going to build out to probably yeah so so I don't know what it takes but I think uh, again echoing uh, I think the summary of everything I mean yeah this hair on fire deadlines uh, barring I think a, a full-blown council meeting I think there ought to be some sit down in the next couple of days, get the facts, you know, whoever, whether there's actually a housing committee yet, well. Okay, so let me ask this. I've heard Philip here putting this up. I've just been really hesitant. Brian, you're the person on the housing committee at this point to so speak <laughs> up if you think about it. I've been hesitant to make some like commitment because of how the housing committee acts when the housing committee hasn't had a sort of a, a working way to approach these kinds of requests. That said, if everybody's like, yeah, but somebody needs to look at this and think about it and have all the information, which I've talked to Emily, but I don't think that means I have all the information. This is, there are new pieces of information I'm learning as we're talking. If it feels like it would be helpful to have essentially a special meeting of the housing committee with everybody acknowledging that we don't, that doesn't mean that we know how to address these things systematically going forward, I'd be fine with doing that. I just don't want to set up some expectation like we have the answer for either any external people or ourselves. Right, right. And, and, and again, I'm just, I am, yes, I'm 100% agreeing with what you just said, which I think is a underside of what I said. But yes, I think we ought to figure it out, wherever this timeline is, figure it out. I mean, once in a lifetime opportunities, you know, let's just again make a good decision yay or nay, and it means getting more information than we have, getting educated, getting all the facts, laying out all the the hurdles, and, and then making a, a good decision. By November 3rd. So, well, so that is what it is, whatever the deadline is. Could the housing committee meet on Monday instead of... The, the, the housing committee is not going to have all the information necessary. Is. That is just not possible. And i I got to say, we we have been offered the greatest opportunity ever on a number of occasions. Mm -hmm. We have. It's not going to go away forever. It won't go away forever. And if you make a poor decision, that won't go away forever. I, I mean, funding opportunities come up, come up, come up. And if you're behind the eight ball and unable to gather full information, vet it with stakeholders, because isn't that a thing we want to do? 
actually figure out is this where you want this to go, Village? Mm -hmm. If I we don't do that, that they're, we're they're, in they're reaching out to Cresco. There we have, yeah, she said. Yeah. Well, we, we are supposed to talk to Amy, our, our attorney, today at 3. And we might have some good information back. I sent her an email on yesterday, day before yesterday with more all the details of my questions about the covenants and um, the zoning change and the process. And so we might have at least a preliminary information back today. It still might be helpful just to have the housing committee for me to bounce back what Amy's saying off of some people besides just... I don't want this to be my only decision, me making the decision on the next steps. That's yeah, right. the stressful part right. of me. And, and with regard to the housing <laughs> committee. I don't think anybody would ever, I don't, I, I'm def, I would, I don't think that anybody would, that's not a, that's not a you thing. At yeah. All. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, I'm just not. trying to explain myself, yeah, like, as to sure. why yeah. I value yeah. having a committee of like course. that, so I can bring it the information and we can all talk about of it. Of course. Yeah. So yeah. I would and appreciate I think that, if the housing committee would meet with MLA and if it makes sense to do it on Monday, Instead of the budget, because I think well, maybe the budget people aren't meeting, but at any, whenever, because regardless of whether this project would work on that site, the housing committee, I think, could get information about these kind of projects. And Homing has tried probably three times to get these kind of projects over the last 15 years. It's not something that just comes up every year. It's very, very hard to do. So uh, at least that we could get more information on, even if this doesn't work, on what it would take for the next thing. Right, and I do think to Gavin's point, while we haven't, you know, had that prioritization like sort of finalized, I think every council member has said that affordable rentals is a top priority. So I, I feel comfortable with um, exploring this. So or continuing to explore. Okay, so you guys are going to have a meeting then. You're going to explore it. The housing you, committee. The housing committee. You, that's and I will too. figure out a time for us. You're going to get yeah. together and explore it. With Susan, right? Yeah. There are a couple of yep. people. Yeah, yeah. And you right back. And oh, yeah. All right. So <coughs> it is 148, <coughs> and we talked about two of the big goals. We can either stay on the two other big goals or switch over to special uh, events, project requests. Or I could just tell you really quick on project requests, sponsorship requests. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, Johnny Page and I met, uh, what day was that? One day this week, Tuesday? Tuesday. Tuesday. Went through the policy for special events. Um, went through pricing and how many do we do of this and what do we do of that and we made it all the way through um, the policy once and then we kind of ran straight through fair through the worksheet just to see what it came up as and it came up pretty good but we want to run through some more scenarios before we uh, vet it with you guys and then the stakeholders so we it is in process we're meeting after staff meeting on Monday to work through those worksheets again for some other events to see does it make sense. We're doing it by, you know, barricades, you know, how many barricades, how many roads do we have to close, how many PD have to be on staff. We're tying it to actual expenses, okay? Not humans, attendance, whatever. Um, so that's in process, and I don't want you to think that it's, we're not pushing that forward, but we want to do it thoughtfully and um, bring it to council probably on the 6th. Yes. is our intention and then it needs to go to stakeholders for their any, any input after that that says hey well, it's, you know you can't do that to us or whatever so that they understand where we're coming from I, I don't want to throw anything else out so that's kind of where we are with special events um, sponsorship requests are coming in uh, I have not honestly looked at I mean I've seen totals and things like that I think we passed a policy or talked about policy at the last council meeting um, we already have 50000 in the budget, so it's not a huge thing. I think we can extend our discussion to down the pike on how the sponsorships happen, and I think Lesson 3 goes to finance, or finance director, and then finance committee can handle the other requests and then bring them to council. It doesn't have to happen like now, because okay. the budget's already been taken care of, if everybody's on board with that. Yes. Okay. So hopefully we'll get those all taken care of um, in the next couple meetings. <coughs> we do need to schedule another finance committee meeting. I think we stopped our schedule because of all these budget meetings. So I will be sending out an email 
to y'all to get you back on board. On it, I probably late November would be our next one or early December. I can't see doing it before then because we'll still be budgeting until then. Okay. Um, so now you all have nine minutes left. <laughs> so what were the other? So what were the other two? The last two. Uh, infrastructure and um, economic, development. economic development. And we're supposed to just touch base on those, but we're not having another budget meeting on it's And that's Monday. the other question. Does everybody feel okay? We only have a few changes to push through the 48000 for affordable housing, 10000 for Walnut, 1500 for um, mediation stipend, and 20000 for sidewalks, potentially. And, and there's some money for economic development? There is, um, 50? yeah, I've sort of forgotten. Yeah. You mean what's currently in the budget? Yeah. yeah. Well, I gotta go back to the details. Yeah, keep talking amongst yourselves. So, I'll just do like a closing comment and answer. I feel like if it weren't for this, you know, low income housing tax credit thing, we would have gotten to every subject. And the re only reason I didn't like stop us and say, let's talk about the other ones is because when it comes to infrastructure, I'm assuming that we've got, you know, Johnny, you're a pretty strong advocate for this stuff, and we were, I'm expecting that we're going to keep hearing about infrastructure needs and that some of the longer term budget planning is where the, particularly the long term projects, it's going to come in. So I, I'm feeling pretty good about where we're at in terms of long range planning on uh, infrastructure. And then economic development, it seems like the partnership with YSCC and communicating about how we work together on economic development. I was sort of assuming that we were going to sort of follow that path, mm -hmm. and that was going to be, you know, the direction we were going to economic development. So that's my, and, and the answer, yes, I am generally feeling fine about the budget with the, including the changes that we made, and so don't feel the need to have another meeting on Monday. Okay. I think the only reason we would have another meeting <coughs> is if other council members want to weigh in on particularly what we submit for that PDAC process, which by the way, is through the Dayton Development uh, uh, Coalition. So, you know, again, you know, we have to submit, I think we should submit by November 3rd with the hopes that we'll get, you know, good ranking. I would think most of what we would submit would be key infrastructure projects, Johnny, that you know about. So, um, but anyway, that would be the only thing is, if beyond Carmen and I, if other people want to participate in that. Well, I, I think the, the, the only outstanding issue is, you know, A, not outstanding, yes, submit something. And then B, what, what things does it matter? Is there any kind of guidance to suggest, you know, where we end up or you know, like we, we take our big four and, and lump them all in there. I, I don't know the best thing to do. And, and so I'm saying, I mean, any money is good money. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm sure you, I trust you guys to put together a, a good proposal, you know, based on what you, what you, what you know now and what you, what you learned in the process. Um, so I don't feel the need for a separate meeting just for that. I think if you all have something ready to go and there's time between now and the actual deadline, if we can see the draft of or, or something of what you plan to submit, I think that would be sufficient. Okay. Yep, and I think that can be shared with everyone. Mm -hmm. So, economic development has thirty thousand dollars for next year, and you know, we have a lot of projects in there for mm -hmm. next year. Maybe some of them aren't going to happen, <coughs> and so you know, those funds can be redirected. I just, just to say. Because strategic planning, if we do that, it's going to be a, a long project and a time-intensive project. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. So, so I think I said a couple of things when I did the uh, ec economic development dollars, and Brian, you, you and I texted some about that. So, <clears throat> um, so it was sort of a two-prong thing. Uh, supporting YSDC in their efforts to, to help us with economic development. The other thing I was considering was 
Uh, we mentioned Cresco a couple of times. I mean, a, a big part of Cresco happening uh, was the fact that we had an active uh, director of the Chamber of Commerce. And we don't have that now. And I, I don't know what their plan is to do that, but I think uh, where they're going is to, to get someone that has more of an econo economic development. It, in my marketing, yes. Yeah, more of an economic and marketing kind of thing. And so, uh, you know, any, I don't care where the money goes that we budget, as long as we're able to help anyone who's helping us with marketing uh, the village. And that's one of those dollar figures that's going to come back to you before mm -hmm. you know you guys are going to decide what pieces, parts of that mm -hmm. get spent where. Can we, can we make it forty? If you want me to, still making changes. Okay, that's what he told YSDC is putting in there. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> are you having coffee over there somewhere, telling yeah. people things? Well, the only thing that Amy did mention is that once it's in there, it's restricted. So mm -hmm. an alternative is to leave it at thirty and then. If we yeah. need to supplement some more, yeah, my my ick in putting it in one of those two thousand or two hundred funds is that it's then. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can you can move to move it back, but so it's 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 restricted now. To move it out, the the twenty eight the thirty thousand is yeah mm -hmm. yeah. Whenever we budget for economic development, it stays in that fund. Yeah. Okay, all right. All so right. you well, could we, leave we, it we, in the general fund and yeah. say, you know, hey, supplemental, we would like to. You know, when right. something actually happens. I like that. This is being recorded, so. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and if we didn't spend. No. It, it no, you rebudget. Yeah. I mean, the, the actual cash that's in the funds so carries over from year to year to year, but the budget does not. Yeah. No, it's restricted. Oh, restricted. Oh. It, oh, okay. So if we didn't, if we only spent fifteen thousand this year or next year, it would. Right. Any revenue that comes into that fund stays in that fund. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Two o'clock. One fifty-eight. Oh, right. well. <laughs> I apologize for having to leave. Um, <laughs> all right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All. All. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay, I think I need at least three. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Those are good discussions. Oh, indeed. Absolutely. <laughs>